the greatest inventions that Nintendo ever came out with was the Game Boy. It was just so amazing to be able to play great games in handheld mode on the go. Now, they took it one step further and allowed you to be able to play your Game Boy games on your television with the Super Game Boy. Now, it's one of those things that it was great for what it was at the time, but it wasn't perfect. And we're gonna to talk to you today about how you can take your Super Game Boy and make it ever that much more precise and accurate. Hey everybody, Gary here with Rock Solid Productions. Thanks for stopping by and checking out our episode that we have here today. I really do appreciate it. Do me a favor, let me know down in the comment section if you had a Game Boy, what color was it, and what game did you play the most? For me, I just had the standard gray one and everything, and I played me a ton of Tetris on it. Now, I never got into the Game Boy Color, but I did have a Super Game Boy back in the day, and I have one now again. That's actually what our copy of Donkey Kong is playing behind me on. Now, in Japan, they actually had the Super Game Boy and the Super Game Boy 2. The difference between the two of them, they actually made a change to the internals on the Super Game Boy 2 for the Super Famicom to run at the correct speed. See, the Super Game Boy actually ran about two and a half to three percent faster than what the Game Boy itself was designed to play. So the music would be pitched up a little bit, you know, your reactions may be a little bit different, and in Japan they actually address this with the Super Game Boy Two. This is a blue version that is highly sought after by collectibles. I've wanted one for a long time because of the fact that the clock timing on it is set properly. Well, I was recently watching a video from the amazing Voltar. If you haven't checked him out, I'll have him linked right up there. You need to follow Voltar. He is one of the best teachers out there. He contributes so much to the community. A lot of what I have learned has been thanks directly to Voltar. So Voltar, Thank you so much for everything that you have taught me along with others. Now, in a video of his, he showed how a simple mod for about $15 to $20 could be installed on a Super Game Boy and allow you to go ahead and have it play at the right clock speed. Sign me up. So we have one. We're going to break out our soldering iron. We're going to walk through the steps. It looks like it should be just a five minute installation. Let's go get started. So taking a look here, we have our Super Game Boy on the bench. And what we need to do to get into this is we need a security bit or a game bit. And that is this guy right here. And we're going to just unscrew this. Now, there were no instructions included with the adapter that we're going to be using here today. However, uh, there is documentation up on the website that we will be referencing to. Now, in addition, I do have my digital microscope set up that I will be using for soldering on here because there are a few components we'll be removing, a couple that will be, well, not a couple, one specifically we will be adding and we will be using our KSGER soldering iron. So there with that, our Super Game Boy screws are removed. And pretty clean on the inside. Where we're gonna be working is going to be on the back side, I need to remove those Phillips screws. I may need to remove those Phillips screws. Now, like I mentioned, Voltar did an amazing video on this. Highly recommend it. He's the one that gave me confidence to give this a shot. And uh, he just does good work. I mean, I really appreciate everything that he does for the community. I hope one day to be able to thank him in person. So yes, you do need to remove those two screws. Holy cow, there's a lot of small components on here. Well, that's good, and I am glad, like I mentioned, we're gonna actually bring up my phone here because the website, and I'll show you a screenshot of this, has everything kind of highlighted as far as what we need to remove. So basically you need to remove uh, the components in R R1, R7, and C15, and he has them kind of highlighted here on screen. And this is where our digital microscope is definitely going to come into play because I am blind and can't see anything anymore. So I apologize that we can't record to the SD card, but it is one of those things that we'll be able to at least show you the screen. All right, so for starters, we've got a couple components we have to remove. 
First, if you see on screen R1, right under or right above it, it says 510K. So we're going to remove this component here. And then on the bottom part of it, we are going to remove R7 and C15. Now to do this super easy, all we're going to do is put some no clean solder flux on each of these components and uh, tin our iron, heat up, and these should pull right off. And we're just putting some flux down there. You can see we wetted the joint. Turn this around this way and do it upside down. Just easier me to get easier for me to get around that chip. And there you go. That one is removed. We'll focus a little bit more. We'll clean up those pads. There you go. That joint looks nice and clean. Same thing again. Just put a drop of flux there. And what's nice about this, these components are right next to each other. So, you know, not a whole lot to have to do here. Again, just tinning our iron off camera. And I'll come in to There we go. Come on, you. We got the one. And R7. Those pads look pretty nice and clean. Those pads look pretty nice and clean. Now, the one thing that they do recommend is using a little bit of um, solder braid to remove any excess solder there. Those actually look pretty low profile. I'm not overly concerned about it. We're done with our board prep. That's how easy that was. Now, here is the actual mod chip itself. We are going to go ahead and remove it from its packaging. So that's pretty much all the board is. Has a new crystal on this end here for us to be able to utilize. And then we'll have to hit it uh, with some solder at, uh, looks like that point right there. Those points there and perhaps these, but I'm not seeing, I'm gonna zoom in here because I don't think that I see any traces or anything, nope. So it looks like we'll be able to just solder those two points and then we'll come back and get that single point there and be able to rock and roll. And now for this, basically, what we're wanting to do is we are going to solder to those two pads there and then to that pad there. And looks like we also need to make contact right on that guy as well. So, and this is where having those two points a little bit flatter would definitely help. Uh, let me just double check the instructions and make sure I'm not missing anything. This looks to be a super simple installation that hoping I don't screw up. <laughs> we just put some no clean solder flux down. What I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna actually use, I have a hemostat here that I'm gonna use to kind of hold everything in place for me. Tin our iron and we'll come down and we'll get this guy first. All right, that's a good, clean, shiny solder joint. That's exactly what we want to see. And that's, you know, that's going to be hard to get around here with that. I should probably switch tips to the J-type tip, but we are going to just see it through with this one. All right, we've got a nice, clean solder joint there. Our final two, and clean our iron. I'm gonna hit this again just with a, and I can see that there's still flux on there, but we're still gonna go ahead and, and hit with a little bit more. Clean our tip, tin our tip.
There's the one. There's the two. And with that, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some uh, isopropyl alcohol and we're going to clean up our solder joints. Sorry for the, the jittery cam there. Let's actually give you a better look at the board now. Now to clean this off pretty easy, just some isopropyl alcohol. I actually have, I keep some in a one-up cleaning card bottle because that's all it is. Adam is very transparent as far as that's all that that is. And you can use a toothbrush for this. I've got a fine bristled brush that's rather firm just to get that off of there. I can also use the back end here just to uh, double check that nothing seems loose. Everything seems like it's soldered correctly. Now while I do have this open, the one final thing I am going to do is I'm going to actually break up a, or break out a one-up cleaning card. We're going to clean those pins because those are filthy. Now I've talked about one-up cleaning cards a bit on the channel in the past. It's got a fluid side and a dry side. All that you do is you apply a little bit of fluid to the fluid side and you take it and you clean up the pins. Now this is a perfect example. I thought that this thing was actually pretty clean, but these pins were dirtier than I thought. Look at all that crud that's coming off. Now this is the smaller one designed for Game Boy cartridges. Uh, they do have larger ones as well, uh, but now we'll hit it with the dry side. Now that we're done with our cleaning, it's time to put it back in the case. All right, and for this, this went face side down. that. We're going to grab our smaller screws that went in. Another reason why I have the hemostat here is it is so much easier to put these small screws back in with something like this. And another tip again, I've mentioned this before, when you go to screw something like that in, back it out, set the screw in the threads, and then start to tighten it down. Put the other guy in here. Again, super thanks to Voltar for doing his video. He gave me the confidence to go ahead and do something like this. Um, again, unscrew, then screw it back in. And the reason I even say that is I've had an issue since uh, about a year now. I had a case of Bell's palsy last year and it's really screwed up my vision. It's one of the reasons why I bought that microscope, to be honest with you. Okay, so that's back together. Put the halves of the cartridge, cartridge back together. And then for something like this, when you're putting the screws into the cartridge itself, same type of thing, back it up before you tighten it down. The other thing, when you have four screws like this, do a star pattern. So I'm backing out, it's in, screw it all the way in. There's two. And that one actually set right in as soon as I got the screw, you know, just half a turn out is all it took. And all that you're trying to do is preserve the plastics that you're dealing with here. And try not to kill your pets as they make noise upstairs while you're trying to film. And with the fourth and final screw in our Super Game Boy, we are ready to throw a cartridge in. Hey, look at this. I actually have Super Mario Land. Let's test it out. So we're going to start out on the Super Game Boy here and taking a look at Super Mario Land. We will have the original clock on the left and the new updated clock on the right. Now keep an eye on the timer in the upper right hand corner at how the one on the left is faster just ever so slightly than the one on the right. Now we are going through our RetroTINK 5X for our uh, video pass through using HD Retrovision component video cables. Thanks to Mike Chi for making an amazing piece of technology when it comes to the RetroTINK 5X. So the updated version a little bit slower, but that's actually quite deliberate since the, oh, uh, since the original I think it's funny that I got small towards the end on both the original and the updated version. Um, you know, since you do have the uh, the slightly slower clock speed, the audio is going to sound a little bit slower on the correct one. Now what we're going to do is we are just going to play one more game, but we are going to focus on the new uh, crystal, the new clock speed and everything. I mean, if we're going to play the Game Boy, we got to play everybody's favorite pink puff ball. So let's dive into some Kirby's Dreamland here real quick. All 
I know I've had a number of people ask me if I have played the new one on the Switch. I haven't even unboxed it yet. It's still sealed. This feels great, though. It really does. They have done a great job with this kit. Got him. Yeah, overall, this is a nice improvement over the original, and it's it's subtle. It's not one of those things that you're going to be like, oh my god, this is the greatest thing ever. But, you know, it's one of those that the games are going to play more accurate, and you're not going to have that feeling of speed differentiation between handheld mode and uh, playing through the Super Game Boy, and that's, that's terrific. This is exactly what I wanted, and again, thanks to Voltar for showing just how easy this was to install and, you know, giving me the confidence that it was something that I could tackle without any real issue. And I think if you have any real basic soldering skills, you should be able to take care of this too. Now let's go ahead, it's time for some final thoughts. That's good stuff. Sprecher Cherry Cola, one of my favorites. Man, what a great, just easy installation, ready to go, takes a couple minutes, basic soldering skills. I'm really appreciative that they had the instructions online as well to follow. A lot of times they're like, here's the kit, have fun! And if that was gonna be the case, I would have just relied on Voltar's video. Again, I will have his video linked up there down below in the more info section as well. Without him, I wouldn't have known about this. So, And I will also have a link down below in a pinned comment. If you want to order one of these, you can go ahead and pick them up. Under $20. Super cool. And like some people are not that sensitive that a 2-3% to difference in the speed of a game is going to throw them off. For speedrunners, people who know where things are supposed to be at certain times, you know, Donkey Kong, perfect example. If you've ever watched King of Kong, you've seen how Steve Wiebe went ahead and with with chalk or whatever, drew the springs on screen so he could time everything just right. There are people that get very serious about this. Now, am I going to offer this as a mod service? Nope. I'm not doing any mods right now with my eyes still screwed up as they are as I'm not wearing my glasses. Um, but this is one of those things I'm sure Voltar will be doing installations if he hasn't already uh, had them listed on his site. Check him out. Hit him up on Twitter as well. Basic soldering skills is really all that you need here to do it, and this is terrific. Now, I am getting ready to head to some conventions this summer, too, and now I may actually head and pick up some more Game Boy games, too. Now, if you are looking for any other mods that we've done from RGB mods of our Super NES Junior that this is playing through right now, how we actually set up our game stand that we have here and connected it to our RetroTank 5X, I will have those videos linked for you right now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you want to help support Rockstar Productions and be a part of our community, there's a number of different ways you can do so. First and foremost, join us over on our Patreon page or become a channel member here on YouTube. By joining through either one of those methods, you get early access to just about all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. We also give you shout outs at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also pick up some awesome Rock Solid Productions swag. We've got t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more available through our Teespring store on screen right now too. You can also pick up some of our awesome 3D printed cartridge stands, Amiibo holders, Nintendo DS holders, and more by visiting our 3D printer store on screen right now as well. Links for everything will be down below in a pinned comment. If you want to stay up to date with everything we have going on here at Rock Solid Productions, make sure that you're following us on the different social media networks. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions, Instagram at instagram.com slash Productions GK, and Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. If you're looking to pick this and other retro and modern gaming accessories up, make sure that you head on over to CastlemaniaGames.com. He has a feature over there called Castle Cash, where the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases, and Castle Cash is just like cash. He also offers convenient payment plans for more expensive items over $50. Finally, make sure that you use promo code ROCKSOLID10 when you're shopping at CastlemaniaGames.com, as it can save you up to 10% on most items on the website. Again, thank you for watching this episode, and I cannot wait to see you again soon.